What is the best prank practical joke that you've ever pulled? Inspired by a post on Reddit a couple of weeks ago, I've been sending a stranger a fun fact about cats every morning for the last week and a half. When he responds I act like it's an automated system. It usually goes something like this. Me. Did you know that all cats are born blind? The ability to see comes within the next couple of weeks. Him. Stop texting me. Me. I hope you're enjoying your subscription to daily feline info. To unsubscribe reply with unsubscribe. Him. Unsubscribe. Me. You've got to be kidding me. Are you sure you want to unsubscribe from daily feline info? Him. Yes. Me. Command not recognized. Not the name I use but I don't want this to show up in a search he might do. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Back in middle school I was sick as a dog and had been home for a couple days. My little brother realized that sick equals no school. So he asked me what I had. I told him syphilis. He goes downstairs. Tells dad. I can't go to school today. I think I got syphilis from Nigel. All I could hear from upstairs was my dad laughing and my little brother pee that he couldn't skip school. My dad came up and told me how proud he was. I laughed so hard I threw up. Not mine, but when I worked at a church one summer, the choir director told me about a prank his dorm pulled while he was in college at a very Christian university. Apparently, there was one guy in the dorm that no one could stand. He was very egotistical and somewhat obsessed with the rapture, as in he was sure he was coming and no one was going to heaven but him. The rest of the dormitory was fed up with his behavior and plotted a scheme. They all left the dorm in the middle of the night. Not only did they leave, but they left showers running, lights on, books open, washing machines going, the works. Apparently the guy was extremely freaked out to wake up and find the dorm abandoned with no one in sight. The choir director was probably the coolest person I've ever worked for. I heard a similar story, except their group also left clothes lying around as if the wearers had just disappeared. They had to explain the joke when the mark started crying about being left with the sinners. Mine's a simple one, but I was always proud of it. We rigged my friend's car so that whenever she braked, who let the dogs out would play. All you need is thread, electrical tape, scissors, and a singing birthday card. I'm going to need a how-to on this one found this on the internet, and decided to do it in real life. Kind of gross, but worth it. When I was in college, one of my roommates had a cat. I started cleaning the litter box immediately after the cat would would poop without him knowing. I kept it up until I heard him mumbling one day. I think there must be something wrong with my cat. He hasn't taken a crap in like a week. Next time he was out, I crap in the litter box. You may commence your judging. But his face when he saw it after he got back, I'll never forget. Wouldn't it have been awkward if he had come back from taking his cat to the vet and there was this giant crap in the litter box. When my little sister was 5 and me and my other sister were 7 and 10, we went to a fair. At the fair we bought one of those birds of a string, that are much like puppets. When we got home we saw that the youngest sister was really amused with it, so we played on it. When she went to bed on the low bunk, we lowered the bird down from the top bunk. Then we started talking to her in a high voice. She thought it was the bird talking to her, and would answer all its questions. Only years later did we realize that she was crap scared of that bird, and she still remembered it with a slight fear when we mentioned it to her when she was 19. It's lame, but I might as well say it. I'm also currently doing it, so one of my teachers is very old and clueless, and she has all the students bring in a picture of themselves so she can put them up on the wall. So every day I bring in a different picture of Morgan Freeman and put it up on the wall, to replace a kid. Right now there are about 5 Morgan Freemans. She still doesn't have a clue. 18 years ago me and some friends were bored to death. Tiny remote village, being 18. I was interested in chemistry at that time and had some sort of high potent explosive. We blew a condom vending machine into pieces and left a note saying the catholic platform was responsible for it. Turned out to be taken serious by the local police. Yes, they've been bored as well. Two reports in a newspaper citing a police officer who said that a thoroughly investigation of a special team would be about to start. We went freaking paranoid, but nothing ever happened. Boredom. Responsible for 90% of this kind of crap. Whoa. Police taking an explosion seriously. Who'd ever thunk it? 
On a long road trip with friend and lacking sleep. I was driving and he kept nodding off. I told him he had to stay awake. But he went to sleep anyway. After a time I found us behind a big truck being towed facing us in our lane. I backed off to get some distance. Sped up directly toward the oncoming truck. I screamed as loud as I could. My friend popped his eyes open to see the truck coming straight at us. He vaulted over the front seat into the back of the car and pretty much pee his pants. One of the funniest things I ever saw. He didn't sleep the rest of the entire trip. Skiriya. Just be glad he didn't reach for the steering wheel to send you into a roll or a ditch. I once had an old Indian man teaching my differential equations class. Every once in a while, I'd hide the white chalk so only the pink chalk could be seen. He'd grumble, try to start writing with the pink chalk, get really upset and then leave for his office to get white chalk. Of course, while he left we hid the pink chalk and put the white chalk back, making him incredibly confused and starting to wonder if he was just making it all up. Very minor and relatively innocuous joke, but was funny. Kind of a reverse, but the mister. Potato head I had on my desk was a stolen and a ransom note emailed to my work address from where's our potato head at gmail.com or something to that effect. This was the latest blow in a long series of escalating pranks between a co-worker and myself. I had previous swapped the M and N keys on his keyboard while he had encased my nameplate in a block of jello. Determined to one-up my adversary, I used Google's forgotten password system and entered the current date. Guessing correctly that he created the account the same day he sent the email, along with something else I can't recall. No backup email was given for the account, so I helpfully provided my own work email address, to which Google later sent a password recovery email. I changed the password, took control of the account, and emailed my co-worker from it. He quickly admitted defeat and never attempted to prank me again. The legend is still told in the office how I hacked into Gmail. I have two from good old college. Prank 1. My friends and I spent the weekend rounding up all the recently sent out phone books around our college campus. We had at least 150 I would say. We then brought them to our other friend's room while he was away for the weekend. We proceeded to tear up every page and crumple it to make a nice floor to shoulder high flood of phone book pages. It's been done before. That's how we thought to do it, but it was fun nonetheless. Prank 2. I was particularly happy with this one as it was my own idea. Myself and two friends went and bought a lot of balloons from a party supply store. I'd say it was about 300 or so. We filled them all up while one of my housemates was out drinking for the night and pushed them all into his room. However, we actually put maple syrup in about 20-30 different balloons. Not enough to really weigh it down, but enough to make a mess. Housemate arrived home about 3 a.m. and it sounded like a machine gun going off as he popped all the balloons with darts from our dartboard. Then next thing I know my door is kicked in and he goes there was freaking maple syrup in those butthole and proceeded to knock everything I had onto the floor and spit everywhere as I guess in his drunken state this would be a satisfactory retaliation. Good times had by all. In college, a friend of mine left his dorm room unlocked so I loaded up pee on his TV. Turned the stereo to top volume, then set up a pair of snow skis precariously so that when I closed the door behind me they would fall and blockade the door. They had to call campus maintenance to break it via the window of his third floor room. This was in 1997. I admitted to it last year. This was my grandma on me and my brother. Being a little kid it was April Fools and I called my grandma at 2 a.m. Bad mistake. I called multiple times and hung up and to remind you I was in first grade. Anyway, my grandparents lived at the time 10 minutes away from my house so we would visit often. April Fools fell on a weekend so we headed over there, and my brother and I were so scared she would know it was us who called. However, she didn't say anything. Instead she offered us candy, as all awesome grandmothers do. First, she offered us some lollipops. We unwrapped them and shoved them in our mouths only to spit them out realizing that they were bouncy balls shoved on a lollipop stick and rewrapped. We were furious. This led to us having a fit. So she offered us more candy to make up for it and we were nervous at first but we accepted nonetheless. She gives us two boxes of nerds. Our favorite candy of all time. However, the boxes didn't sound right. My grandma went to tell us how it was a special type of nerds. 
So me and my brother ripped open the tops and dumped the whole box into our mouths only to discover that the sweet flavor was completely absent. In its place was a sour salty substance known as dry cat food. We sit it out and didn't accept candy from her for a few months. She also gave us a lesson on pranks and how to prank people the right way. Lesson learned don't prank your grandma. TL. DR pranked grandma. Grandma pranked me back by giving my brother and me lollipops that were bouncy balls and nerd boxes full of cat food. Lesson learned don't prank your grandma. Except. So while not necessarily the most clever, it was the one my friends and I were most proud of. Two friends and I were home from school, and for whatever reason one of us was watching The View. There was an internet poll where they were asking people to vote for as they went to commercial. It was such a joke non-question that we felt the need to try to skew the results. The question was do you think you are a good mother? The three of us were just bombing the website with no votes, and ended up recruiting some other people in a chat room. Eventually we got it so like 80 plus percent of viewers thought they were bad mothers. The beauty was that this was being updated live throughout the show, which led the hosts to start to posit why their viewers saw themselves as bad mothers, including such insulting gems as maybe it's because most of our viewers are stay at home mothers, and they feel they don't support their families by earning money, they kept going back to it during the show, and if they did catch on it was after the show was already over, we were pretty proud that we got the view hosts to unwittingly insult their own viewers. As if watching the view wasn't insult enough. Mine was subtle and I didn't even do any of the heavy lifting. This was roughly 5 years ago on Mother's Day. I was away from my family but being a good son I called my mom and my stepmom. Wish them both a happy Mother's Day and just as I was hanging up I nonchalantly said, Oh and you should wish, my newly married sister, a happy Mother's Day too. Oh man I had no idea the storm I was about to unleash. My mother immediately called my sister to confirm and got the truth. My stepmother however got a busy signal when she tried calling my sister. So in her excitement she called her whole family and most of my dad's family. In fact she got so caught up telling everyone she could that she forgot to confirm with my sister. It was late that night before she finally heard the truth. She tried doing damage control but even today it's still paying dividends. My sister just had her first child and while she was visiting that part of our family and aunt and her family we don't talk too much were completely confused when she saw my nephew. Don't you have an older child? Only one? Hum. Why did I think he was older Kangri phone call later that day? Best prank ever and I didn't even need to work that hard. So simple, yet so brilliant. This is my favorite. This is a great one and pretty harmless. Save a copy of your friend's current Facebook profile picture. Change your profile pic and your name on Facebook to friend's name who you have a bunch of mutual friends with. Make status something along the lines of, just got a new phone. Please text me your number. Your friend will be flooded with his friends texting him his number and be completely bewildered. But did this to my friend who I was with. Hilarious. On April Fool's Day my friend wanted to play Warcraft with me via dial-up modem. He asked what my number was, even after he had just called me. I told him something to the effect of 911XXXX. Next thing I know he calls me back and told me the cops ended up coming to his house. Still feel bad for this one. I don't believe this one. I've called 911 accidentally from work before because our extension to dial outside the office was 91. If you tell them it's an accident they don't send any police to the location. In 6th grade. We had history class from 1.30 to the end of the day on Wednesdays. Generally, the lesson didn't take the full hour and a half, so we got recess for the last 20 minutes or so, the only time all week. Well, April 1st happened to be on a Wednesday that year, and our class came up with the perfect prank. A couple of us stall the teacher talking coming back from lunch, and a couple raise ahead, and set all the clocks in the room ahead 17 minutes, about 25 minutes into the lesson. The teacher looks at the clock on the wall, looks at his watch, and asks if the wall time is right. A kid in the front row had also changed his own watch, and showed it to the teacher with the wrong time. The teacher then proceeded to change his own watch ahead to the wrong time. We got 17 extra minutes on the playground, and the teacher didn't realize anything until his watch said the school day should have been over 5 minutes ago, and no parents had arrived sent my best friend some flowers from his boyfriend on his very first day of being a fireman. 
says he still gets a hard time occasionally. Read this as, says he still gets a hard on occasionally. In my second year of Spanish, only my friend and I actually knew Spanish. Everyone else was basically clueless. We had to do one of those things where the teacher calls on you to read a sentence. Our friend, let's call him Tom, knew absolutely no Spanish and needed to know how to say my favorite place to go on vacation is the beach. So we helped Snickers him learn this sentence. So the teacher calls on him and he states, Mi cago en la leche de la puta tío la luz, which he thought meant something about the beach. It really means I crap in your W mom's milk, more or less. My teacher was the maddest little Costa Rican lady I've ever seen. TL. DR. I got this kid to tell my Spanish teacher he shoots in her mom's milk. I used to work at a restaurant and was talking to my manager one day. One of the new waitresses, fresh to Texas from Minnesota, walked up and asked us how to say enchiladas verde in Spanish. Without missing a beat he told her Vergas verde, green dong. We knew it was a win when we could hear the kitchen erupt with laughter from inside the dining room. Quite a few but the first one that pops in my mind is when I cut out a picture of a male underwear model from a magazine and taped it to the top overhang of my prison cellmate's bunk. Little did he know I had stuffed the back of the picture with baby powder. I had top bunk and was reading waiting for him to come back from wreck and trying not to laugh. He comes in, lays down, looks up and yells what the frick is this stupid crap fist punch he then yanks down the picture and gets covered in baby powder. Runs back out of the cell where everyone can see him. Forever giving him the prison nickname Whitey which sucked for him cause he was black. When I was in high school, I would steal all the expo markers from my one Spanish teacher's room. And break out the back, and replace the ink tube on the inside with sharpie ink. The next day I would replace the markers and he would write on the whiteboard with permanent ink. The look on his face when he couldn't erase was priceless. Would easily waste 15 minutes a day. I did it twice a week for months. Did a similar thing, but switched the inks of two different colored expo markers. The teacher started out writing in red, which slowly changed to black over the course of a class period. The look of bewilderment on his face was priceless. We had a couple good ones back in high school. 1. We took all the hammers out of the bells so that they wouldn't ring. All but the one by the office. So all the administrators were oblivious to the fact that classes were going long and people were standing in the hall waiting for them to begin. After a day, a whole day really, they started having announcements because someone told them. We got caught, received got in school suspension and a fine. It was so worth it. 2. We saw that a huge storm was on the way to our area. So we made signs and put them up all around the school advertising the fact that a Burkrumbi and Fitch would be on the school grounds for an all school A and F picture the next afternoon during lunch. And we said it was on the football field, which was some 500 feet from the school and the interior was hidden from view by bleachers. So we who put up the signs sat and ate and watched as everyone decked in their A and F gear walked out there, waited and sadly trudged back into school soaking wet when they figured out A and F weren't coming. I love the gullible. LOL. I don't want to make all your guys' pranks seem like crap, but one time, I asked my friend to go get me a coke from the fridge. I was out of cokes. You sick bastard. No one will see this, but here it is anyway. I like to send Christmas cards to people I know. Only I sign them from made up people. I don't just sign them from made up people though. I write notes in the cards talking about their, the recipients, family and the events of the year and how great the coming year will be. Blah blah blah. The effect of this is that the people I know receive a Christmas card from someone they have never heard of, who seems to know an awful lot about their life. The look on their face must be priceless. It worked like a dream on my wife's parents. My best work in this style was pulling this in double fashion. Adding in some fake gayness, and cross sending the cards. It worked like this. At that time I had 4 old college friends, all guys, who lived as 2 sets of 2 roommates. Having known them all for 10 plus years, I had numerous pictures of each. I spent a few hours photoshopping one pic of each set of roommates so that it looked like they were an overly gay couple out at a party or some nonsense like that. After doing that, I turned each picture into a Christmas card and sent each card to the other set of roommates. 
I found out later that all of them were thoroughly freaking confused at what was going on. I never told them and still laugh about it to myself. In college I worked Saturday mornings. One night my friends were up pretty darn late blasting music in the basement which got annoying and they wouldn't turn it down when I asked several times. The next morning I put an alarm clock on my laptop connected to two very large floor speakers, locked my room and went to work. About halfway there the texts and calls start rolling in. Album of choice? Taylor Swift which is hilarious. They had no access to my room and spent an hour at 7am trying to get in and eventually just flipped the circuit to my room. Hilarious nonetheless. Girl sends note in class. 8th grade. For everyone to drop their books at 12.30pm. Note comes back around changing the time to 12.35pm. I'm the last one before passing to the girl that came up initiated the idea. And I don't pass it the note to her. Come 12.30pm. Line book drops to the floor. Class erupts in laughter. Girl never forgave me. Oh my gosh, we would always do this in my English teacher's class. Like he'd be talking or reading out loud and then everyone would just silently get up and walk out. Or we would all set our phones to go off at a specific time. It bewildered that poor guy every time. I've pulled a few. I can elaborate get pics and video when I get home if anyone is interested. Team 4 room its room. Took 15 hours and we did everything. Books, bed, clothes, papers, pens, walls, photos on walls. When we were done it was difficult to stand in the room for long because it screwed with your depth perceptioner and you would get a bit nauseous. We drove around town and collected about 8 matizes and wedged them in between my friend's apartment's front door and the railing. This actually ended up being a prank on me because my friends instigated it and made me think it was the friend who I ended up mattressing. Seren wrap across the bedroom door at eye levels smeared with Vaseline. Filled a friend's room waist deep with crumpled up phone book pages. My friend retaliated to the tin foil by filling everything in my room with their soft BBs. Ail thou I got her back very quickly by collecting them and setting them up to dump on her when she came back into her room. She deserves the karma because I am still finding those BBs 4 years later. There were a few more scare pranks thrown throughout there over the years. But that's all I see and I remember off the top of my head. Whenever someone mistypes can a CNA I read it as a Scottish accent. My freshman year of college I remembered a prank that my second grade teacher told me about. She had filled a friend's bedroom with paper while they were away on a trip. It occurred to me that this would be a great way to prank a friend of mine that lived down the hall and the only single. I got my other hallmates in on it and we started figuring out how much paper we would need, a lot of engineers involved. After realizing that we would never be able to buy enough paper, we started looking into alternative paper sources. Someone realized that our school paper was free and on Thursday nights there would be stacks of them in multiple buildings around campus. So over the next few months we would go get a snack or be in the library and on the way out we would pick up whole stacks, still bundled, and bring them back to my room. We would then hide them in the extra dresser and wardrobe in the room. Three person room with only two people. Longer story. Of course, when you have several different people dropping off stacks of newspaper every week people get suspicious. Including the target. We explained as nonchalantly as possible that we were seeing if we could get the school to buy a second or larger printing press. He bought it and actually helped us steal them. Several months later my roommate and the target were playing an ill though out darts drinking game that involved chugging a lot of beer. After a couple hours they are both pretty wasted so we put the target to bed on my futon and steal his keys. Once we got his room open and covered his computer and DV with trash bags, like that would make a difference we gathered up some volunteers and went to work. Three hours later we were all covered in newsprint, but we had filled his room from floor to ceiling with crumpled paper. The next morning, I hid his keys so he would have to wake me up before getting into his room. I held out giving him the keys until everyone was awake. Someone got a video camera and we followed him to his room. Bam paper everywhere. We then played Xbox for several hours in a den of newspaper before cleaning it up. It took 30 or so trash bags to get rid of it all. TL. DR. Filled friend's dorm room with crumpled paper from floor to ceiling. It would have been even more hilarious if you had put him in his bed and then filled up his room with paper. Imagine waking up after a drunken night with crumpled paper all over you. That would be a WTF moment. 
I took all of the furniture out of my co-worker's office, put the furniture in the bed of a truck and then parked said truck in his office. I used to sit in the back corner of my Spanish class in my senior year of high school. The class was insufferable so I had to entertain myself which I did by humming. Eventually, she began to hear the humming but didn't know I was making it so I played along and told her that I heard it too and I thought it was coming from the heater. She turned off the heater thinking it would solve the problem so naturally I kept doing it. After a couple weeks of doing it she had the janitor come take a look at it. He found nothing wrong with it, as he should have, so I continued to do it. Fast forward another week. She gets so sick of the humming that she calls the principal and yells at him demanding a new motor for the heater. The principal obliges and spends $200 on a new motor to replace a perfectly functional motor. I'm lucky that my classmates sitting around me thought that the class was miserable, too, and didn't tell the teacher that I was messing with her. TL. DR. Convinced my Spanish teacher that the heater was broken and buzzing when it was actually me humming. School spends $200 to replace a functioning motor. Over about 7 months I convinced my old roommate, who is terrified of ghosts, that our house was haunted to the point where he moved out. If this has any interest I can elaborate, but usually when I give the full story people look at me and tell me how fricked up it was. Example, I rigged a system where I could slam his door from outside the house. The chocolate covered tuna ball incident of 2009. I've posted this before, but basically I made chocolate covered tuna balls and a batch of chocolate covered peanut butter balls. I left them in the employee break room mixed together on a plate. For those concerned about food safety I made they sure they got thrown away after a short period of time and kept the rest in the fridge. To this day I still hear about it. By far my best prank ever. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.